Um, I'm Peter O'Donoghue, uh, the co-writer and editor of Pulp, a film about life, death and supermarkets. Um, I'm the only member of the team who's in Sydney. Uh, the others, well, Florian uh, and the producer Alex are at the... Um, they're going to be on the same night at the Sheffield uh, opening night of the Sheffield Dock Fest, which is um, Pulp's UK premiere, and also the day before the Pulp cinema release in the UK. So a lot of effort's gone into that, and uh, I think it will be a bit of an extravaganza. Hopefully, a lot of a lot of screens. I think 200 screens are going to around the UK are going to simulcast the Q and A and everything as well. So. Wow. And I mean, when you when you talk about you know a, a better place to premiere the film than in the UK than in Sheffield, I mean, there's no yeah. other option. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I think Sheffield Dockfest were pretty happy, um, and so the band's there, and uh, it's a bit of a. I mean, in the nature of, in the spirit of the film, it's a, it's kind of a Sheffield pulp kind of loving thing. So that's, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, and the film pretty much seems to feature everyone who lives in Sheffield as well. So they'll <laughs> be clamoring to be at the, the Q and A. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it'll be hard to get in there. They're actually on the hunt. Uh, I, I saw this today. Um, Florian sent me the front page of the uh, the Sheffield Time, no Sheffield Star, which is the paper that the guy in the film sells and. Yeah. Uh, the, it's a photo of him in his booth because he doesn't work for them anymore and it's uh, 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 the front page article says can you help us find Terry for the premiere of the pulp film <laughs> <laughs> so they're trying to invite him to the to the premiere no one knows where he is he's well, such a prominent part of the film isn't he yeah 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 he's a really cool guy so I guess talk us through firstly how you got involved in the project um, I got involved uh, this is Florian and I it's the third film we've made together um, and the last one that we co-wrote was Love Story, which um, was a similar situation. He, he That's set in New York. He had a pr- sort of a premise for a, a film that married fiction and documentary. Um, mm-hmm. But he just called me up and said, can you come to New York um, in a couple of weeks and start working on this film? And I did that. And this time he... Uh, after taking Love Story to London Film Festival and uh, not really knowing anyone in London, he invited, he thought, oh, well, I'll invite Jarvis Cocker because he's such a big pulp fan. And uh, Jarvis couldn't go, but he saw the trailer for Love Story and loved it. Um, so Florian set up a private screening and then pitched to him the idea of making a film. And then, so for me, it was the same scenario. He called and said, oh, we have to shoot this pulp's last gig in Sheffield in six weeks. And Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which uh, it was, there, were a lot, there was a lot of pressure on that oh, initial big shoot. Mm-hmm. Um, would, but it was awesome. But yeah, it, it couldn't, there wasn't a lot of room for the planning that would normally go into mm-hmm. something like that. Which perhaps even made it a better experience because it made it a bit more natural in terms of let's just do what we can in the time that we have. And yeah. And it work. Yeah, certainly around the concert, it was it, the logistics were really mm. intense. But apart from that, like the first day there, uh, Florian just hit the streets, and then we realised, oh, we're we're going to make a film about the place as well. So that so that's how that happened. That you didn't go into it knowing that that's what the story would end up being. No, not at all. Um, but Jarvis had had this. Con- Jarvis was actually it was fortuitous because he wanted to make a film, I think, but they didn't get round to it and. Mm. And they didn't have time probably and the tour was nearly over and uh when florian turned up it was a kind of meeting of minds and tall skinny guys <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and they um ended up uh, jarvis had already thought about incorporating sheffield somehow into the into the thing so mm. what was then the challenge in in the editing room when you when you're trying to marry those two concepts that, you know still wanting it to be a you know, have that, that concert footage and really embody what that night was like, mm. but, but also telling the story of, of the people in this, in this city? Um, well, that was the reason that the edit took probably a year mm. um, with, with a couple of big breaks. But uh, we wanted to make a, a film that wasn't, well, definitely wasn't just a concert film, but also wasn't just a band film. Mm. Um, or a rockumentary in that classic sense. Mm. And um, we just did what we could after the first shoot with marrying those two elements together. And once the band sort of saw what we were trying to do, they were really into it. So that 
that um, is kind of why things worked well, I think. But then it involved, like I try and put stuff together and, and um, we sort of saw what was missing. Florian would go back and do another shoot. Um, I'd say we kind of need, all right, we need, uh, we need a young musician. We need some kids. We need something like that. And he'd find those things and, um, and it had happened. And then he would also set up more of those kind of tableau things that he does, mm -hmm. which I think are the best parts of the film. Through the process of, of making the film, what did you what did you learn about the band, and, and what did you learn about Sheffield? Uh, I learned about the band. I, what I learned about the band was that they were an inspiring story of sticking at it because mm -hmm. uh, I had no idea they'd been together since like 1980 or something, and um, it was only 95 where they sort of hit the charts really huge they even 92 i think they started to kind of take off but they'd been going for 12 years without you know w basically wanting to be pop stars and not getting there at all so um that's a that's a kind of inspiring you know lesson to people who are willing to stick the distance i guess but that that, that sort of also made them they were a bit more mature i think when they got famous so that stood them in good stead in the long run. And especially, you know, Jarvis has, had already kind of become this charismatic, um, sort of fairly smart guy on TV and stuff by then. So, mm. um, yeah, I think there... Uh, I also... I, I wasn't quite aware how, how warmly they were embraced. They, they weren't just like a lot of British bands, I think. I mean, England just produces such a ridiculous amount of music. And... A lot of it's um, cool, but not many people have that kind of lovey feeling for a band like they do for pop. And I think it's because they're so um, self-deprecating and not really rocking themselves up too much in the public eye. Mm.